Hi, in this quick video I'm going to demonstrate why using a bus bar across the circuit breakers is much better than using jumpers. Now over here I have a small setup and it's got a bus bar across these three circuit breakers. Now the bus bar is rated according to this circuit breaker and this earth leakage circuit breaker breaks a 63 amp current which means everything after the circuit breaker must be able to handle 63 amps, otherwise it will burn before the circuit breaker operates. If we decided to add another circuit breaker, say for example a 10 amp circuit breaker, now you might not have a larger bus bar. For example, here is a four-way bus bar which would be perfect. I could install this here and it will provide me full connectivity across the top rail here. But what happens if you didn't have that bus bar a lot of people just use a jumper. Now they install a jumper like that and yes it will work. Now this is a 10 amp circuit breaker and this is a 1.5 millimeter cable and a 1.5 millimeter cable can handle more than 10 amps. So in this case if I insert this jumper like that I'm not doing anything specifically wrong by having that jumper there because the current carrying capability of this conductor is more than the circuit breaker and that's the most important thing that the wire must be able to carry more than the circuit breaker. The problem comes in when somebody adds another circuit breaker and possibly even another circuit breaker. Now what happens is they tend to connect a jumper from there to there and then there to there. So this circuit breaker over here is 32 amps. So ideally I must use at least a four millimeter conductor but right there I'm making a fundamental error. Now this conductor over here can definitely handle more than 32 amps. So if I connected a boiler or a geezer to the circuit breaker, yes, this conductor would be fine. But notice it is now connected in series with this smaller conductor. So it is connected in series with a 1.5 millimeter conductor which can only handle 16 amps, maybe a maximum of 18 amps. And let's not forget, it still has to supply the maximum of 10 amps to this circuit breaker. So if I've connected my light circuit here and a boiler here and they are now on and I'm pulling maybe 25 amps here and 5 amps here so collectively 30 amps, this jumper here is now a fire hazard. It will get hot, it will burn the PVC and I've now reduced the protection function of this circuit breaker because this circuit breaker is designed to operate if the load asks for more than 32 amps but this cable here will probably burn first and in doing so creates an increased risk so it is not functioning correctly because what I was supposed to do is connect it via a bus bar. I'm showing that no matter how many loads I add, the maximum current carrying capability of this bus bar is more than this, which means that if I overload my entire DB board, this circuit breaker will trip, therefore protecting all the loads. But in this case, this jumper over here will stop that from happening. I will no longer get the correct protection I'm supposed to have. And what makes matters worse is somebody may even do that and keep adding it in a daisy chain, making it even worse. So yes, if you're connecting one additional circuit, the jumper is fine. But the, for best practice, try to use a bus bar, cut it to size, make sure the bus bar can handle more than the main circuit breaker, the main switch of your DB board. If you don't have any bus bars and you need to urgently connect it, what one could do is do this. In this way, I've now made sure that the 32 amps will be traveling only through this conductor and the 10 amps will be traveling only through that conductor. This makes sure that it is still safe. But best practice is to just use the bus bar. Another problem with using a jumper is if there's already a cable inside the terminal and then I try and insert this to make it my jumper, what happens is even when I tighten it, and even though I've made it completely tight, what happens is this is not that tight. You can see I just yanked that out. The reason being is that it doesn't quite compress. I would have to have used pliers and twisted these two together to make sure that when it's in the terminal that it makes good contact. If we have a look at the bus bar, we can see that the bus bar is flat. So when I tighten the terminal, it compresses directly onto both sides of the bus bar, having an increased surface area and therefore reducing the contact resistance. 
Also, copper tends to reshape after it's been seated in there and tightened, requiring us to go and retighten it after a few hours or days. Another problem with using jumpers is sometimes with thick conductors, we cannot get the jumper inside. And what people tend to do is they want to cut a little bit of the main conductor off so that there's more space to insert the jumper. And that is completely incorrect. We can't cut any of these cores off because we'll be reducing the current carrying capability of this conductor. Right, I've provided a few reasons why bus bars are better. Thanks for watching and cheers.